Hello, I'm Danny. Still, welcome back to another edition of Hobby News Daily. I am joined uh, by Ezra Levine from Mascot. And uh, Ezra, this is uh, like your quarterly visit. I think it was three or four months ago you were here last and uh, wanted to check in and get an update. So uh, tell everybody what Mascot is and uh, why I keep bringing you on. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know why you, you actually keep bringing me on. Neither uh, do I. That's why I asked you. Well, so mascot, <clears throat> excuse me, mascot is really two things. Uh, first is it's a really great inventory management solution. We have partnerships with uh, all the grading companies who type in a certain number and all the details uh, on your inventory immediately pops up. Really cool stuff. Uh, the second, uh, which we're probably better known for, is it's a multi sales channel capability, which really means you can list uh, items for sale across multiple platforms currently live or eBay. My Slab, Shopify, and TikTok Shop is actually launching in about a week, two weeks, give or take. And then we have partnerships with other marketplaces that are, that are being integrated right now. Veriswap, My Card Post, Comic Connect. There's a couple of announcements coming. So by creating one listing on Mascot, you can send your items out to you know, about eight different marketplaces. When it sells in one marketplace, we automatically remove the listing. Uh, I should also note Mascot is completely free completely free for users, which is a big selling point. Certainly we make money from various commercial arrangements uh, from marketplaces and other vendors. So it's a really, really great tool. You were kind enough to have me on when we first launched Mascot. This was back in, I would say in and around the national. So in July of 2023, a lot has changed. A lot of updates, a lot of partnerships, a lot of development, a lot of uh, hustle. So I, I'm, I'm excited to tell you uh, what's been going on and update the community on all things Mascot. Well, I think your Fitbit has uh, gained a little traction since we talked last. Uh, I, 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 I don't think there's a card show I haven't heard or seen uh, mascot involved in or uh, you, you, you at recently. Um, and we're going to get to that in a second. But uh, I think one of the cool things about mascot, I'm going to put it into plain English because I think you've done too many podcasts and too many shows. Uh, you, you can take your card, you can take your collectible, you can take your comic, you put it on mascot, it automatically. We'll, we'll, we'll list it on the multiple platforms that Ezra mentioned. Um, it just ta it just takes your card and just puts it in front of more eyeballs. Um, and, and, and that's the that's that's the benefit for me. That's how I look at it. Um, the cool thing is you've put the features in for all the pain points that could come up with the process. So if I have multiple listings, which you know a lot of people do that now organically, it's all manual. What you're saying is, and, 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 I, and I know this, and, but if you could go into the details of how I could manage each separate step and what happens if I actually make a transaction on one. Yeah, so you're right. I mean, we really built Mascot to solve that exact pain point, right? Obviously, if you're a seller, you want to maximize the amount of people who see your item. Obviously, you want to sell things as quickly as you can, uh, as fast as you can, and obviously for as much money as you can if you're a seller. So we believe that getting items in front of as many people as possible, as many marketplaces as possible, will certainly help that. Uh, you're right that uh, through Mascot, you can list items on multiple marketplaces all at the same time. So imagine you're someone who already sells on eBay and MySlabs. You're likely, um, unless you have a tool uh, or unless you have Mascot, you're creating uh, an individual listing on eBay. And then you're going over to MySlabs and creating an individual listing at MySlabs. And you're probably doing this across other channels, too. You no longer have to do this on uh, if you use mascot, you create a listing once and all you do is you select which marketplaces you want to send it to and boom, within two seconds, you're now on a bunch of different channels all at the same time. You can also customize what price you want to put on each marketplace. So you can say, I want things in eBay to be a little higher, a little lower, things on my side to be a little higher, a little lower. You can customize whatever price you want uh, all through one listing on mascot. If it sells in one marketplace, we have technology, it's all automated, that will remove the listings from all the other marketplaces once a transaction occurs. This happens instantaneously, so you don't have to do anything. If it sells in eBay, the listings on all these other channels immediately uh, take down. You'll get a notification from Mascot when that happens. So it's all automatic. There has not been a single instance, I'm very proud to say this, uh, in which through Mascot, there's been a double sale yet which is pretty cool, right? So but we've, since we don't talk during a no-hitter, you know, we, we're continuously monitoring we're that. Itself, of course. Right, we, we're, we're continuously monitoring the situation and taking it seriously. <laughs> um, 
I I wanted to talk about to me there's two different user bases and yeah. I and I wonder how you look at it. I think this solves problems for a regular collector who wants to to understand their collection but also for the card shop or the dealer who wants to manage with financial tools and maybe go second level next level um in their ability to to manage and run their collection for profitability. Um is that how you look at it as two kind of two different user bases? Yeah, you know, it's true, right? I mean, um, you know, and we've, we've seen pretty much every type of participant uh, in the hobby and the market use mascot in various different capacities. And obviously, as we continue to grow and scale and pick up more and more users, we uncover opportunities and we uncover uh, areas that we certainly need to build out even more to be able to support those, those types of people. Uh, we absolutely have individual collectors who just want to manage their collection. If they want to sell something, they list it across marketplaces. We absolutely have that. We certainly have dealers who either do this, you know, full time or, you know, at least as, you know, real good side hustle or utilizing the platform. We have a lot of inventory and that's constantly changing and evolving. They're constantly buying collections or constantly selling items at shows or at marketplaces, what have you. Uh, we have actually a lot of hobby shop clients uh, and we are uh, just really through uncovering opportunities and talking with the community. We are building out something more specific for hobby shops that does seem to be a pain point for people. We have consignment companies who are uh, really acting essentially as an agent for a lot of other uh, people's inventory who need an easy way to track. Uh, okay, this is Danny's, this is Ezra's, this is John's, et cetera, right? So uh, we have a lot of those clients. Uh, some of our clients also are not just, I would say, the B2C side. And when I say that, I mean, you know, be the collector or be the customer or be the you know, consumer, you know, I, I say, um, you know, we also I, have business. I like the beta collector. I'm yeah, still right, me too. I, me too. I, I, I think I just, you know, coined it on the spot here. Yeah. But uh, we, we also have B2B clients, right? So what, what do I mean by that? We have marketplaces, our, our clients, right? We have partnerships with all marketplaces. We're driving a lot of inventory to marketplaces. We have grading companies that are uh, customers and clients and partner of ours, where either we have data relationships where by putting in a serial number, it pulls in all the details or more extensive partnerships like what we just did with CGC. We can talk about this, but with CGC, something uh, across all categories, not just trading cards, when something gets graded by CGC, the submitter will have the opportunity to essentially click one button and it'll say add to mascot, where immediately upon uh, the oh. grading being completed, it can automatically drop down to mascot. You'll get high res images and all details. So literally one click. Uh, you can be uh, from the grading room onto multiple marketplaces through Mascot and, and our partnership with CGC. Um, we have data companies who are partners, certainly. We work with, you know, Card Hedge and a whole host of other uh, providers. Some are coming. Waxstat is another one that's uh, th that's coming on the Wax side. So there's Al's, a whole host Al's of doing a great job over there. Yep. Al, Al's, Al's awesome. He's doing a great job. So, I mean, we we work with... Uh, and support and partner with pretty much every type of market participant. The one I think that I didn't mention yet, which we're really excited about, and you, you mentioned uh, Fitbit. I'm actually not a Fitbit guy, but I have an Apple Watch and I have an iPhone, but uh, same, same, same concept. Uh, we are working a lot now with trade shows and we're really, really excited about this. We're trying something that's never been tried before, that's historic and groundbreaking and innovative and, uh, and new, certainly, which is we're working with the Philly show for people who don't know, the Philly Show is a big regional show in Oaks, Pennsylvania. It's one of the longest running uh, collectible shows there are. It's a really great show. Uh, it's run by Joe, Joe Drellick and his team, uh, who are also taking over the uh, national for the next couple of years, at least. And what we're doing with them is that dealers can upload inventory that they're going to be bringing to the show to Mascot. Then people who are at the show, who are attending the show, essentially have a search engine so you type in what you're looking for, say uh, 1952 Mickey Mantle, right? You type it in, it'll tell you all the dealers and all the tables and the locations of the tables that have a 1952 Mantle. And of course, you can get more granular with your search, 1952 PSA 2, right? It'll tell you exactly where to go. Uh, even cooler is that even if you can't attend the show, you can still search the inventory that's available on the trade show floor and contact the dealers directly to hopefully facilitate a transaction. So really, really excited about all the different uh, opportunities and areas uh, where mascot can really support the market. And 
uh, all in the name of helping to grow the industry, but really helping to reduce frictions. I say this all the time. I'm sure everyone's sick of me saying it, but the goal is really to reduce frictions in the hobby, make the hobby easier, make it faster, make it more accommodating, uh, and really help to you know kind of uh, to, to propel its growth uh, through reducing friction. First of all, you know I I think that's amazing what you're able to do at the show. Um, but I, I really want to ask you what on camera, what I've asked you off camera is how far away does that push you from the ability to do a search in general across all platforms? Um, is that, is that, I mean, is, am I thinking two years down the road with, with, with my craziness? Um, you know, how far out is that idea? Because I think if people could, I was looking for a certain card and I had to go to all your all the marketplaces you work with and i would love to be able to buy through mascot so when when can i do that well you, you've been you've been consistent with your request to this feature <laughs> that's, that, that's Ezra's way of saying i'm a pain in the ass no, but thank you you never 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 no 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 never of course not um the answer really is is that uh you know it's kind of funny through building this trade show tool and uh you know i think people will be able to see it soon uh, we'll probably do a demo uh, for dealers uh, specifically and people are attending the philly show over the next couple of weeks so people will kind of get a sneak peek of what this is going to look like and really it's actually a very similar tool to what you're describing and re requesting ad nauseum from us so okay. the the ability for us to kind of then just say okay that maybe, maybe this is not just a show tool it might be something that we always have essentially a, like the ability to search mascot for the inventory that's been loaded onto mascot and be able to essentially get links to wherever it might be uh, is something, you know, theoretically, if we decide to do it, we could turn it on pretty quickly after the, after the Phyllis show. And I think that is something that's been requested shockingly, not just by you, but by a couple of other people. And, everybody, everybody I've paid. <laughs> and, you know, what's cool too is, right, it's also exposure. It's, again, not just additional exposure for people's inventory, but it's additional exposure for a marketplace partner, right, who, again, you could just link quickly to, the um, the listings and all these on all, on, all, on all these marketplaces and some people might have different prices on all marketplaces so you'll be able to then kind of click into it and see okay who has the same item at the best price and that that you know that's obviously you know I think everyone's goal as a buyer is to buy the items that they want at the best price that they can just the same way a seller's goal is to list items and get the best price they can so uh, I do think this could be a cool tool to do that I don't think we've made you know sort of a firm firm commitment to doing this right after the show but the tool, the technology uh, will certainly be there. Well, I promise to only bug you once a day from now on. That's it. I'll cut. I'll cut back. I feel like Shawshank Redemption. I just write a letter a day for years <laughs> until I finally get my library. At, so. at some point, it will probably work. At um, some point, I'll throw my hands in the air and say, "You know what? Danny has worn me down enough. I'm finally yes. going to run into this it's just relentless pressure from Danny Black over here." That, that, that's how I got my wife to marry me. So. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about the hobby in general. You're yeah. launching at a time that people are, are calling it, whether it's a down hobby, a, a, an adjustment, a correction, whatever, whatever it is, it's yeah. not the pandemic. Yep. So I have found in my personal experience, people still want to buy and sell. Yep. It's just at what prices they want to buy and sell. So are you seeing traction? Are you seeing velocity? Um you know, or what's your view of the hobby that you've learned through Mascot? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, look, I, I think you're right. I don't think there's there's any any doubting that, you know, the market is in a bit of a down uh, downturn. But again, I don't think that's unique to the hobby. Just look at the stock market, look at the headlines, look at, you know, kind of general macro conditions. I mean, there's slowdowns across the board. Right. And there's so many conditions that lead to that. You know, it really yeah. gets confusing when you talk about it. Yeah. So, but I always like to put that in context, right? Because I think people kind of look at the hobby as like a microcosm and say, well, the hobby is this. The hobby is that. I think the hobby is um, very tied to just kind of, you know, discretionary spending and the health of the consumer and the health of the collector and how people are just feeling in general. Right. And so, you know, I've been very consistent and on record a lot of times. I'm very bullish on this industry. Obviously, that doesn't mean it's going to go up and to the right in a straight line. And there's not going to be any pitfalls and downturns. No, of course not. Right. It's a market like anything else that's subject to the whims of the economy and the whims of collectors and all that stuff. 
Um, but I do believe there is just a tremendous amount of opportunity still in this space. I'm encouraged every day. And it's not just mascot, but, you know, you talk to uh, a lot of entrepreneurs who, in spite of a very difficult environment, are still continuing to build a lot of really great tools that I think will make the hobby better over, over the long term. Um, you know, I, we, I, we certainly hope so. <laughs> we, we hope so, uh, certainly. So, yeah, I mean, you know, through, through mascot, obviously, it's, uh, you know, you do get sort of a unique vantage point because you can see you know, at a high level activity, right? And you can see at a high level, you know, where people are listing and price points and all that stuff. And, you know, what, what I would say, again, I don't think Mascot has kind of seen the, the, the full cycle yet. Obviously, we launched three months ago, so we're still fairly early in our journey. Um, but, you know, I've, I've also been going to a lot of shows. Shows are, are interesting because you get a real kind of pulse and an energy and a sentiment in real time of how many people are there and what the dealer's feedback are and what are they doing well, they're not doing well. And you know, some of it is really kind of specific to a certain dealer. One guy may have just sold one card or bought a collection and they're thrilled, but you know, you get kind of general sentiments. I would say the general sentiment is things have slowed, no doubt, right? Things have slowed. Transactions are not uh, as voluminous as they once were. Prices certainly are, you know, a little bit more rational. But on the flip side, you hear from a lot of people who are saying they love it, right? Because the cards that were previously out of reach are now attainable. You know, and the ones they thought they could never own again back in 2020, 21, 22 uh, are now within reach. But then you also speak to someone else who say, well, you know, the, the, the set collector is the real core of the hobby. And, you know, if they can't, you know, collect these sets at, you know, reasonable prices, then, you know, you've ruined the foundation of the hobby. So there's there's all sorts of perspectives on this. What I will say is I don't think it's, I don't think it's arguable that, you know, the, the market has taken a downturn, but I don't think it's specific to this industry. And I'm still very confident, very bullish. Uh, I think, you know, over over time, you know, I think this industry will continue to grow just like it always has. But I think the pace of innovation, the pace of technology to support that innovation and, of course, the, a gazillion pound gorilla in the room, fanatics with their resources, uh, with their commitment to, to growing the industry, with their, you know, essential, essentially mandate to, to grow the industry. I mean, I think. I think you will see some some good things happen, not necessarily tomorrow, but you know, over the next three, five, ten years, I think there's going to be a lot of growth. One of the things I think you and I uh, share, and in, in a lot of entrepreneurs, are optimism, and 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 never being content at the same time, um, and and it's it's a, it's a balance every day on every decision. Uh, of, of I'm excited for moving forward. This might help me out. However. Is this the best? Is this, you know, the, the, the you know, the, the big picture? Hobby News Daily has taught me so much since we've launched, um, and sim- about the hobby, about people's interest, about the uh, the niche markets, and the response we've gotten. I'm going to be completely honest. We, we we had very strong growth, the peak at the national. Then I think the industry slowed a little bit, but the last. 30 to 60 days, we've seen tremendous numbers on our side again for the first time, you know, since the national. Mm -hmm. So I I wonder if there's, you know, a cyclical nature, if, uh, you know, people always talk about a post national, you know, kind of, kind of let down. Um, But, but I'm bullish as well. I I think the hobby is is in a very strong place uh, going forward. I'm somebody who's trying to take advantage of buying uh, where I can. Um, but at the same time, I have this ready. These are getting listed on Mascot. So um, I, what I would tell people, and I've messed around, I've signed up, um, I'm ready to go. It seems so much easier to just take your collection, get started on Mascot, as opposed to starting on all the platforms and, 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 and doing everything twice. Would, 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 would that be fair advice? I think that's great advice. I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, you know, look, I, mean, I think in the in the content business, it's actually interesting. I was, th- I was thinking about this actually prior to this podcast, right? Because, you know, you do see sometimes negative headlines actually bring more viewers and more clicks. They, I mean, that's pretty much how the, how the financial media uh, works. That's how a lot of media works, right? Is like, you know, a crisis is actually a really good opportunity because people just love negative headlines for whatever reason. Uh, exactly. So it's sad, like, and look, I mean, I, I do think, you know, they're, they're obviously, uh, I guess I'll talk from a transactional volume and a pricing standpoint. There are, there is seasonality to this industry, certainly. And you do see historically that, you know, kind of October, November, you know, into Christmas time, give or take, 
historically and, and seasonally has been a slower time for this industry and then it tends to kind of ramp back up and obviously tends to kind of crescendo in, you know, in, in around the uh, national time. So, uh, you know, I think, I think all that's is, is natural, normal. And obviously, Danny, I've always been a, a huge fan of yours and your entrepreneurial uh, spirit. And yeah, I, I do think that we, we, we share that, um, you know, that, uh, What's the, the the personality trait? I'll, I'll throw it at that, which is you know, never complacent, always always looking for what's next, always trying to grow, and really always just trying to support the hobby. I think we're we're both people who are passionate about it. You know, think it's a, it's a great space to be, a great community to be. Uh, but but there obviously are opportunities to uh, grow it and to eliminate pain points, no doubt. So I'm looking right now, and I'm going on the website. Talk somebody through exactly what what they see when they get there because because i'm looking and and it, it says that there's features and book a demo you know wh what is that and what am i getting when i do that when you when you book a demo yeah and, and, and what, what does that mean when you so when you when you book a demo well i'll backtrack a little bit right so um i think we built this platform and we've got a lot of feedback that you know the platform is somewhat dummy proof in the sense where it's it's fairly easy to navigate that that being said i've been i've started enough technology related companies to know that no matter how easy you think you've built a platform people people will get confused by it <laughs> no doubt right so uh the book a demo feature is really the ability to get more one-on-one -on -one support i actually like to do a lot of these demos myself uh a because i like to, i like to get to know our user base and i like to get real-time feedback on it and i like to just see how people are experiencing it so there's a decent chance if you book a demo that I'll be the one who actually uh, is is doing the demo with you. What it really just means is we give you a full uh, walkthrough of how to use the platform, the features. We'd like to find out a little bit more about you as a collector, how you're going to use the platform, and just offer up some tips, strategies to maximize your experience. They're usually short, anywhere between 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Occasionally it goes longer, uh, but it's uh, it, it's a really good way if you're someone who's you know, new to the platform and not sure how to use it or someone who wants to just find out more. It's a really good way to get some one-on-one -on -one support uh, with Mascot. I'd probably do three of these a day and I, I actually love it. It's, it's weirdly one of the things I like most uh, about this role is it's just it's just the interaction. You get to know a lot of people and uh, you really, you know, from a, someone who's building a product and you know running a company, you get real-time uh, feedback, whether good, bad, or ugly, just in terms of you know, what pain points you need to solve for, what things you need to do better, what things you can build out. And by the way, a lot of people have really great, great thoughts and suggestions. You know, oh, I, some, some, some of our, some of the, some of the features we've actually built have been direct feedback from our users. And uh, without that feedback, I'm not sure those wouldn't have gotten built. So uh, I like it. It's one of the most uh, fun parts of my job. And so please, if you're interested, sign up for a demo. You can see it right on the website. It's all through Calendly, which will just give you kind of uh, you know free, uh, free, free spots. Very, very easy to do. And the last question about that is, um, what what's the best type of person for you to work with? At what stage in the collecting process? Because I would assume somebody who's just getting started is, is not somebody who needs to 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 get started, you know, with you in a full demo. But I would assume if I'm a side hustle, if I'm a, a card shop, um, if I have a decent sized collection, um, the, that's that's where the demo becomes the most helpful. Yeah, look, man, I think I think demo could be applicable to, to anyone. I mean, look, I think like our perfect customer, perfect customer is someone who uh, is already doing omni-channel selling. What I mean by that is like already listing on multiple uh, channels, you know, has someone who has a little bit of kind of know-how of the industry. Uh, graded cards are certainly easier to work with than a huge collection of five million raw cards that have never been scanned or imaged or anything of that sort. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think our perfect customer would be someone who, you know, is, uh, is selling on multiple channels. Maybe they have an eBay account, a MySlabs account, a Veris, like all these other accounts, but are looking for an easier way to kind of streamline doing all that. We certainly have a lot of customers who who fit in that category. But um, yeah, we 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 see it all. We we work with everyone. Uh, we're you know, if you're someone who's new to this industry, who even just wants to talk shop and kind of pick our brains as to how to how and where to sell and best time to sell, and we we see it all, and we're very happy to talk to you. Well. I was very happy to talk to you, and I thank you for joining me on Hobby News Daily. Um, evidently, uh, this is a quarterly appearance, and I'll try to back off of uh, bugging you about features coming up. Uh, but I, I, I wouldn't make promises that you, you definitely can't keep here, Danny. That is, <laughs> that is not a promise you're going to be able to keep.
It, that, that's pr probably fair. Um, Ezra Levine, mascot, thank you so much. And uh, I will tell you on, on a personal note, uh, you know, I, I know you and I share a lot of thoughts in the world right now. And uh, hey, just, you know, peace, brother. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a it's a challenging time in the world, but we will we will get through this. Absolutely. And um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, seriously, if you're interested in mascot, it's www.withmascot.com. You can find us on all social media channels at with mascot. Uh, if you're in the Northeast, I would highly, highly encourage you to come to the Philly show December 1st to the 3rd. It's going to be really unique. It's going to be really historic. Uh, it'll be a bit of an experiment, no doubt. Uh, but if you want to be part a small part of hobby history, you'll see for the first time you as an attendee or you as a dealer can participate in, I think, something that's going to be really cool uh, and I would say hopefully really helpful uh, for for the industry going forward. So I would highly encourage you to come to the Philly show. Um, but you can you can shop and browse and contact the dealers even if you're not there, correct? Even if you're not there, even if, even if you're not in the Northeast. If you live in California. There, if you live in California, what's cool is if you live in California, the Philly show is now applicable to you, right? In a way that it, it may not have been before. Now, you know, the Philly show is an event and you can participate in the event, even if you can't be in Philadelphia, which is something that I don't think any 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 show aside from just looking at content uh, has really been able to say before. Well, congratulations on everything. Uh, we'll talk in the future to everybody else. I try to keep it to, to half an hour and I think we're going to come in just underneath. So thank you so much. And we'll see you on the next episode of Hobby News Daily. And by the way, if you listen to this podcast in one and a half speed, it's only about 13 minutes. <laughs> it's, yeah, right. It's just me rambling. It's the other 13. Thanks, buddy. Take care. Thanks, Daddy.